if you have been working with computers for any amount of time, you are probably familiar with the idea of files and folders. Files are collections of information that represent photos, documents, source code, databases and all kinds of other things. They are the basic unit of data storage we work with in a graphical environment. That's still pretty much the same in the command line environment as well. There are two commands I want to point out but not dig too deeply into. These are called file and stat. Both of these commands can take a look at a file and learn some things about it. File will generally be able to tell what kind of file you are asking about. If a file's name isn't clear or if it doesn't have an extension, sometimes it can be tricky to figure out what exactly it is. Using file will give you some insight into whether something is an archive or an executable file or say, a text file or other kind of document. Stat, on the other hand, tells you some extended information about a file. As we'll see when we look at the LLS command, some of this is available there. These commands can be helpful to know about if you come across an unknown file. We organize files into directories, or folders like you would keep a bunch of related papers or photographs together in a folder or envelope. In the graphical environment, we can navigate around these files and folders with the mouse, seeing how they are organized and finding out information about them. We can do the same thing in a command line environment. So, let's take a look at that. I have rearranged my desktop here to show how the terminal commands and the folder structure are related to each other. In the file browser, I can navigate to the exercise files. From my home folder, I can click on documents. And there's my exercise files. In this graphical interface, I can see pretty easily what folder I'm working in. Over here in the terminal, we get a clue about what folder we are working in on the prompt. To tell the character, right here, means your user's home folder. To match up with where the file browser is, the exercise files folder, I can see that I'll need to navigate into the documents folder and then into exercise files. To do that, I'll use the cd command which stands for change directory. I'll start by typing the path that I want to go to. I'll type doc and then press tab to auto complete, since bash knows what's available. And nothing else in my home folder starts with doc except documents. Then I'll press enter to run that command. Since we have navigated to a different folder, the prompts changes. Now, it says tilde slash documents, indicating that the present working directory is documents inside of the user home folder. I can also find that out by typing pwd, for print working directory. That shows us the full path, or absolute path of a folder where we're currently working. An absolute path starts from the root of the file system, the highest level of the structure where files are stored. Inside of the root, the home folders for users are stored in the home folder, and then my user's home folder is represented by my user name. Inside that is documents but we need to go one folder deeper to get inside the exercise files folder. I'll write cd exercise files and press enter, but I get an error. I can see here that bash thinks that we are trying to get into the folder called just exercise. That's because cd has interpreted exercise files, as two words, two separate arguments, because there's a space in between the words. We have to tell bash that the space is part of the name, not a separator between two arguments or commands. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to put the string of text inside quotes. But the more common thing you'll see is to just escape a special characters. In this case the space between exercise and files. To let bash know that the space is part of the folder name, not a break in the command. To escape something, we type a backslash in front of it. Escaping a character means that it's treated literally instead of having any other special meaning. That works for one character at a time. If we had two spaces in there, we need to escape each space character individually. So, again I'll type cd space exercise slash space files and press enter. Now when I type pwd, I can see I am where I expect to be. Now that we are inside the exercise files folder, 
I'll type ls again to see what we have got. Let's take a look inside the departments folder. I'll write ls and this time I'll use the dash capital R option to list folders recursively and I'll add departments here on the end. Now I can see what's inside all of the folders inside departments. Your irrecursive options means when ls comes across a folder, it steps inside and looks around, listing anything inside the folder. If it comes across another folder inside that folder, it does the same thing, steps inside, looks around and reports back. This is a helpful way of exploring a whole structure of folders. I can see here there is a subfolder within departments called HR, and within there a folder called policies. Let's use the cd command to change into that folder. I'll write cd space departments, because we are still in the exercise files folder, slash hr slash policies and press enter. We can also move back up the folder structure using the cd command and two dots or two periods. These two dots represent the parent directory of the current directory, so, in this case, the HR folder. So cd dot dot will take us up to the HR folder. If I do the same thing again, I'll go to the departments folder. And I can use this dot dot in conjunction with other paths. I go back to the policies folder with cd space HR slash policies. Let's say I want to jump over to this finance spreadsheets folder that I see. That's inside a folder two levels up. Inside the grandparent folder from where I am now. So, I'll write cd dot dot slash to get back to the HR folder, dot dot slash to get to the departments folder and then finance slash spreadsheets and press enter. If I check out where I am with PWD, I can see I am exactly where I expected. Paths that only use a fragment of the absolute path to a folder, are called relative paths. I can use the shortcut cd space dash with a dash character or a minus. That takes you back to the previously used folder. So, it's great for switching back and forth between two folders if you need to do that. Or for jumping into a folder and back without losing your place. The last directory change command that I want to talk about is just cd by itself. This takes you from wherever you are, back to your home folder. You can use these commands to navigate around the whole file system, wherever you have access to do so. Thanks for watching this video please hit the like button if you like it and subscribe this channel for upcoming future videos and comment your queries we will answer shortly.